all visual novel fans have, or will have at some point, sooner rather than later, come to develop a long-running and unusually intimate relationship with the famous quantum mechanics thought experiment known as Schrodinger's Cat. Referencing Schrodinger's Cat is so pervasive across the medium that it's basically become a meme in its own right, and is maybe the one thing that a vast array of otherwise wholly unrelated games share in common with one another. From kinetic visual novels to ones featuring fully integrated gameplay, from science fiction to horror to mystery to psychological thriller, heck, even certain rom-com dating sims aren't exempt from it. But when it comes to games that have even the slightest sci-fi bent in particular, it's hard to overlook their obsession with Schrodinger's Cat, turning the use of it into something akin to a form of the Bechdel test for the subgenre. For the few out there watching that would qualify as the uninitiated, I will briefly cover Schrodinger's Cat at an extremely high level. VN veterans, hang in there one more time. It will be over quickly, I promise. Schrodinger's Cat is a thought experiment originating from the field of quantum mechanics, that is, the subdiscipline of physics focused on characterizing the elementary particles that make up our universe. The thought exercise itself is rather straightforward. A cat is placed in a box with a 50% chance of survival after an hour has elapsed. Until the box is opened and an observer is able to note whether the cat is alive or dead, the argument is that the cat can be described as simultaneously alive and dead, which is starkly antithetical to how we, as human beings, perceive existence. Only once the box is opened does the cat's state formally shift to something more in line with our perception, into being either alive or dead. One of the primary takeaways of the thought experiment is highlighting the disparity between the reality we are acquainted with and the unintuitive nature of elementary particles. That is, the idea of defining their existence probabilistically is every bit as nonsensical and paradoxical as trying to postulate that a feline, hidden just barely out of view, could be accurately described as simultaneously alive and dead. This leads to the ultimate goal of the experiment, that it was titular physicist Erwin Schrödinger's way of critiquing some of the controversial principles of quantum indeterminacy, illustrating how certain aspects, aspects that were being touted by his contemporaries, were so shaky that the slightest errant breeze could send the whole thing careening into nonsense. Nonsense that would not be so trivial to reconcile. In the context of visual novels, however, Schrodinger's Cat is predominantly leveraged in its more colloquial, pop science form. It's used to illustrate the concept of multiple parallel world lines, an instantaneous superimposed snapshot of all possible realities, at the exact moment before they proceed to diverge into distinct and disparate futures. This concept should be more accurately credited to American physicist Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation a theory which outlines exactly what its name implies. The Many Worlds interpretation is built on top of Schrodinger's cat, referencing the opening of the cat box to define the moment at which two separate, but equally valid timelines are generated, with each one corresponding to the cat's status at that particular moment. This, of course, synergizes quite nicely with the medium's hallmark of branching, multilinear storylines where different actions and dialogue choices selected by the player, oftentimes the only means of interaction, are used to determine which of the various predetermined paths and routes the narrative will take. Obviously, this is a gameplay construct first and foremost, but it presents a unique challenge for anyone brave enough to attempt to devise a coherent and digestible in-universe explanation. For as many jaded eye rolls as VN veterans dole out at the mere mention of it, the fact of the matter is that Schrodinger's Cat does in fact do a remarkably effective job of succinctly and intuitively baselining whatever in-universe explanation has been concocted for the existence of multiple potential world lines, regardless of where on the spectrum of vaguely scientific technobabble it falls. And trust me, there are certainly some instances where you'll quickly learn to not take it for granted, to appreciate that there is always this familiar and reliable bedrock to fall back on. Whether or not you agree with the argument that Schrodinger's cat has been overused, misused, abused, or horrendously maimed over the years, it's definitely here to stay, and so I'd like to take the chance to trawl through my personal favorite uses of Schrodinger's cat throughout all of the visual novels that I've played. The Psy-ADV line of games, specifically Chaos Child and Steins Gate. 
For a series of games involving building giant robots, or course-correcting the space-time continuum to save the future, you'd think it'd be well-positioned, pedagogically speaking, to deliver the most insightful and profound explanation of Schrodinger's cat. But that turns out to be far from the case, as both Steinsgate and Chaos Child prefer to tackle the thought experiment by way of tongue-in-cheek, flippantly brushing off the mere mention of the term as Baby's first introduction to quantum mechanics, and blatantly calling out its rampant overuse. This fourth-wall-leaning, wink-wink-nudge-nudge approach certainly isn't groundbreaking, but given the heavy sci-fi nature of the overarching franchise in general, it's hard not to be amused by the sheer irony. The Zero Escape series, specifically Virtue's Last Reward. If there was one visual novel director who could outscience the Sai ADV games, it would have to be Kotaro Uchikoshi, with his knack for diving headfirst down scientific and philosophical rabbit holes, routinely puppeteering his characters to deliver rambling non sequiturs on pseudo intellectual topics from the prisoner's dilemma to the Mandela effect to Pygmalion to the Chinese room to Boba and Kiki, the list goes on and on and on. I personally love it, and find his blistering enthusiasm and passion for expounding on these fascinating, esoteric theories every bit as charming as it is infectious. And when tackling Schrodinger's cat, Uchikoshi certainly pulls no punches. While not his first rodeo with the subject, as he's name-dropped it in some of the kid titles such as Never 7 and Remember 11, Zero Escape represents the zenith, with Uchikoshi cranking out what amounts to essentially a full-fledged lecture. I mean, we literally see Phi painstakingly recreate the entire experiment right in front of Sigma, by MacGyvering together a few odds and ends at her disposal and tediously breaking down the theory step by step. Far more impressive, however, is Uchikoshi showing that he's done his homework, explaining that Schrodinger's cat merely serves as the basis of the aforementioned many worlds interpretation, even having Phi reference the theory by name, and only then does she relate it back to the idea of multiple parallel world lines. This places Zero Escape's use of Schrodinger's cat among the most faithful portrayals of the thought experiment, digging past its superficial pop science veneer in a way that is so characteristically Uchikoshi-esque that it proves unequivocally why his works command the devout following that they do. Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony, The Fifth Class Trial this one is quite a curious entry, because while Schrodinger's cat is casually mentioned earlier on in this notorious franchise built on psychopop adolescent slangs, only here, at the penultimate chapter of the third iteration of the mutual killing game, does it leave a lasting impression. It's incredibly obvious that the experiment laid the conceptual foundation of this completely off-the-rails murder case, which is arguably director and scenario writer Kazutaka Kodaka's most fiendish puzzle of all time, a title which is only contested by the previous game's own Trial 5. The murder case in question takes place in a locked room wherein only two possible candidates have been confirmed to exist, Kaito Momota and Kokichi Oma. Once the sealed room is finally opened, the survivors find only a corpse which has been mutilated beyond any practical recognition, courtesy of the room's hydraulic press, and a mech called an Exosil, piloted by the remaining party, whose identity is concealed inside the Exosil's hatch. As the investigation closes and the class trial commences, the mystery party enters the courtroom, still concealed within the cockpit of the Exosil, adamantly refusing to divulge their identity, and further leveraging the mech's built-in voice changer to disguise their voice, switching between Kaito and Kokichi on the fly. And with that, Kodaka presents us all with what can only be described as Schrodinger's homicide. Until the hatch of the mech is opened, both the victim and the killer are simultaneously Kaito and Kokichi, with the following challenge presented to the survivors. Determine who is currently piloting the Exosil, and whose body had been crushed under the press, lest they all face Monokuma's ruthless execution. As a rabid connoisseur of detective fiction, with a particularly soft spot for murder mysteries, this diabolically clever setup resonates with me wholeheartedly. This case truly stands alongside the timeless giants of the genre. It's every bit as bold and creative as it is absolutely bonkers, and honestly something that could have only been born out of a mind as unflappably resourceful and ambitious as Kodaka's, always striving to push the envelope, even with 16 mind-bending murders already under his belt, most of which could be considered masterclasses in their own right. Crucially, however, the question posed is not, is the cat alive or dead? But instead, what if your life and the lives of everyone you cared about hinged on you figuring out whether the cat was alive or dead? 
turning what was a quaint thought experiment, if one that was irreverent and insensitive towards our mammalian brethren, into a high-stakes quantum gamble. One thing's for sure, however, by the end of this, you'll finally come away knowing how the titular cat feels. Umineko no Naku Koroni I was a huge fan of Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None long before I read Umineko, and so I was absolutely delighted to learn that the epilogue served as one of Ryukishi Seven's chief inspirations. That is to say, Umineko was born at least partially out of a hypothetical alternative ending to the novel, one where that faithful message in a bottle had never made its way ashore, thus keeping the truth behind the grisly murders of the island perpetually locked in limbo existing only as an abstract shroud of possibilities. Ryukishi took this concept all the way to the moon and beyond, into the forbidden realm where witches reign supreme, molding and extending the idea to encompass the entire narrative. And thus we arrive at the mysterious slayings of the Ushiro Miya family on Rokenjima Island. Is what you're watching unfold throughout each cycle of mutual destruction actually the truth? Or is it just something born from the distorted memories of a tortured playwright's amnesia-ravaged mind? Or maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's the end result of rampant speculation and rhetoric, cobbled together from a collective assembled on some online conspiracy forum, accompanied by countless gossip rags. Taking the entire subgenre of sleuth mystery, whose core tenet is built on seeking the answer, seeking that singular be-all and end-all solution that will bring closure to the case, Ryukishi then proceeds to flip the chessboard around and presents a more fundamental quandary. Is the truth even something worth reaching? thereby relating the unveiling of the cat in Schrodinger's experiment to something akin to the opening of Pandora's box. It's a question that sits at the heart of Tritagonist Angie Ushiromiya's existential journey, a journey which will remain incomplete until she faces her ultimate challenge, the challenge of deciding whether she and the rest of the world are ready for the truth that dwells within that fabled, forbidden cat box. So that does it for my personal favorite uses of Schrodinger's cat across all the visual novels I've encountered. But since this video was far from comprehensive, I'm curious as to what your thoughts are on the use of Schrodinger's cat across the medium, if there are any outstanding, memorable instances, whether they be good or bad. Be sure to leave a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching.